Okay, so we are discussing about this accelerometer which is having like this kind of combs and using some electronic circuit you can measure the change in the capacitance and can accordingly measure the output voltage and this output voltage is related to the uh, deflection or the movement of this proof mass and accordingly acceleration of the body. Now let us say we will see that how we can use this kind of capacitive measurement for force balance sensing. This is force, force balance sensing means the force will be balanced. So, what does that mean? We will see. So, let us say that there is this proof mass which can move in uh, the vertical direction only. Okay. So, it can this proof mass can oscillate in this direction in this direction and these two plates A and B are fixed plates in between which we are measuring capacitor, capacitance between the uh, proof mass and the A and also proof mass and the B. Okay. So, initially initially both the top plate and bottom plate are at the same distance from the mass. So, this is D and the same uh, um, so from the same distance and that distance is D let us say. Now, so this is the complete circuit how we can get force balance. So, that we will analyze one by one using uh, like for this kind of capacitive accelerometer. So, let us say we apply some uh, voltage here V A equals to V naught plus V m sin omega t. So, some AC signal I am applying with some DC bias right. So, this V, v 0 is DC bias and V m sin omega t where V m is the like the uh, amplitude or the ma maximum value. So, 2 V m will be the peak to peak value right and uh, omega is the frequency and V b on the another plate uh, like the bottom plate we will use the same in magnitude in the bottom plate we will use the same magnitude, but negative voltage. So, this will be minus of V 0 plus V m sin omega t. Okay. Now, if I consider this voltage to be let us say this voltage is is V i. So, this voltage is V i and then how much is the V i? While the capacitor while the uh, mass is not moving it will it is from the same it is at the same distance from the top plate and bottom plate then the capacitor for the both the sides are same. So, it will be like 0 because it is like plus V 0 plus V m sin omega t to, to, to minus V 0 plus V m sin omega t and how these signals look like if. So, let us see if this is V naught then if this is my V a then the So, if this is V A then this is V B right. So, this is let us say V A and this is V B. So, it is same in magnitude, but opposite in sign. So, it is same in magnitude, but opposite in sign. So, the V I will be 0 initially right. Now, if the tip if this uh, mass moves then the capacitor like this distance will be different and let us assume that it has move towards the top by a distance x. 
So let's assume that it has moved to the top by it uh, by an uh, um, amount x. Okay. So the gap between the top plate and the mass is now d minus x, whereas the bottom plate and the mass, uh, the proof mass is d plus x. Right. Now, if the voltage uh, induced in the central mass is V i, then V i, then the charge at the top plate because of the top plate will be V a minus V i into C 1, where C 1 is the capacitor between this plate and C 2 is the capacitor between this plate. Now the charge have to be conserved, right? It will be the same charge of the both side of the uh, central mass. So V i minus V b into C two, and from there we can write that V i is equal to C1 minus C2 divided by C1 plus C2 into V0 plus Vm sin omega t okay. so plus vm sin omega t. Now here we have put that v a equals to v 0 plus v m sin omega t and v b equals to minus of v 0 plus v m sin omega t right. So this we have put and we will, we will get this expression. Now this signal Okay, before we go there, so what is C1 minus C2 by C1 plus C2? So C1 equals to epsilon A by D1 and what is this D1? D1 is like epsilon A divided by D minus X and C2 is epsilon a divided by d plus x right because this is the, the distance between the central mass and the top plate and bottom plate. Now if we uh, calculate this then c1 minus c2 by c1 plus c2 we will get as this term will give as x by d x by d where x is the displacement of the mass and d is the initial gap between the central mass and the central mass and the top or bottom plate. Now once this signal passed through the capacitor then capacitor blocks the DC only the AC is passed through. So this signal once it goes then this V0 will get cut because the capacitor will block this V0 the DC part only the AC will go AC will go. So this let us say this is uh, at this point if it is V i let us say V plus which is going at the positive terminal then we write that plus equals to so C1 minus C2 divided by C1 plus C2 we write X by D to Vm sin omega t right. So this is capacitor blocks the DC and now this signal is coming as like the V positive is the X by D Vm sin omega t and this is going through this operational amplifier which is connected as a buffer amplifier. So here also it will be same V plus right here also it will be same V plus. Then we are using a demodulator circuit which will actually kind of block the higher frequencies and only the lower frequencies will pass. It will be kind of uh, uh, used as an envelope detector. Okay. So the outside, the output of the demodulator 
what we will get. So, let us say this signal we call VFB. So, that is feedback because it is again connected to the input side. So, that is the feedback signal. So, the V feedback or VFB will be equals to A1 Vm x by d. So, where from this A1 is coming? A1 is coming because we are using here an amplifier which has a gain factor of A1. So, that A1 will come right and where this uh, what does this uh, sin omega t go? So, this omega usually we keep it uh, uh, higher frequency. So, we choose the omega such that that it is uh, very high value and then it gets blocked at the demodulator circuit. So, only the AC part is there, only the sorry only the DC part or the magnitude part is there. Now, if this x is already a time varying signal then we will we will be able to detect that. So, let us say this x itself as a uh, uh, like with time it is changing right. So, then V feedback also will be like that. So, it is not like that that we are uh, chopping off all the time varying signal, but it is only we are only blocking the high frequency. So, that we can see exactly how the x is changing right, how the x is changing with time. As the mass has moved to the uh, like the upper side, now the distance between the top plate and the bottom plate is different right and because of that there is a uh, um, there is a charge imbalance and because of that there is one uh, there is some electrostatic force. Now, how is that how much is that electrostatic force? So, electrostatic force electrostatic normal force between two parallel plate can be written as like W by D where because this is uh, known to us right that W or the energy divided by the distance we usually get the force right. So, uh, like electric field is dV dr or V is the potential or work done here also W by the distance. Now, in this case what is the W? W is like the energy stored in the capacitor and how much is that? That is half C V square from electrostatics we know the energy stored is half C V square divided by D and D is the distance between the two plates. So, again C equals to C equals to epsilon A by D. So, and then there is this V square and because of this another D, so it will become D square right because 1, 1 by D is coming from the C and then already there was a D, so it is epsilon A by D square into V square right okay. Now, this is the force in between two parallel plate like the normal force. Now, in our case what will be the what will be that force? So, that electrostatic force equals to A epsilon naught by 2 where A is the area of the uh, like central mass as well as the top plate and bottom plate it is all same into V0 minus V A B divided by D minus X whole square minus of 0 plus V A B divided by d plus x whole square. So, see here we are only taking V0 minus V A B or V0 plus V A B. Why is that? Because the V m sin omega t with respect to the negative part it was already in symmetry like the central mass was already symmetrical right and while the mass has not moved while well the mass has not moved then at that time V i was 0 because both the side capacitance is same then the charges are same and the force is also same. So, there was uh, no net force in the vertical direction, but at the uh, as this move then 
as this move then what happened is there is a DC level shift right there is a DC level shift and because of that because of that this V V0 minus VFB and V0 plus VFB is coming because one side it is like uh, plus V0 and the side is minus V0 and accordingly the distance also between the top plate and bottom plate is one side it is D minus X and another side it is D plus X. So, while the VFB is coming from the top side it is V0 minus VFB whereas for the bottom side it is minus V0 minus VFB so it becomes V0 plus VFB and both are these forces are opposite. So, the net forces will be we can simplify it to 2 A epsilon naught V0 Vm A1 X by dq and here we have considered here we have considered that the deflection of the central mass is very small compared to the gap compared to the gap. So, this is the electrostatic force. Now, some uh, this body this this body or this sensor accelerometer has been kept on some body which is actually accelerating and because of that this force has applied right. So, if the body is accelerating with a uh, with an acceleration let us say small a then the force applied is actual force applied is mass into acceleration right where mass is the m is the uh, mass of the sensor of this central mass this central mass is having a mass of m. So, then the force is m a and this force is equals to the electrostatic force because it only has uh, a this amount of force only has been uh, it is only able to move the uh, move the uh, proof mass to its top position or bottom position. So, m a is equals to So, now we can see that this x by d is directly proportional to the acceleration. So, once we measure once we know that how much is the uh, how much is the deflection x then we know that how much is the acceleration because this d m capital a a 1 all these terms are already already known to us. Uh, so, now if we I am telling this sentence again. So, now we see that the x by d is equals to d square m into acceleration divided by all these constant terms right. Now, this acceleration according to the acceleration this x will change. So, once we can measure the x then we know that how much is the acceleration and this d m capital A epsilon naught or this uh, v 0 v m and a 1 all these terms are already decided by us. So, we are deciding we know that uh, what is the uh, geometry we have designed for the sensor. So, accordingly we know this area mass and other things the gap and all and also we know that how much voltage we are applying. So, these terms are also all known and we measure the distance and accordingly we can get the acceleration. Now, how we can measure the uh, distance because we know that this is x by d and this x by d is again related to Vfb. So, we know 
that how much is the uh, this uh, Vm we know, this A1 also we know and accordingly we can calculate the x by d because v, uh, this feedback voltage what we are actually connecting to the input again as feedback that we can measure here. So, we can measure the feedback voltage from this point and, and accordingly we can calculate what is my x by d and accordingly we can calculate how much will be the acceleration. So, in using this circuit we can use uh, using this kind of system we can measure the acceleration. So, with this we uh, like finish this module as well as this course and before ending so we will just uh, revisit once uh, that what we have learnt in this course. So, initially in this course we have first uh, studied about like we have seen we have the, uh, that what are MEMS sensor, what are micro scale or nano scale sensors and uh, why they are important right. And then we have also discussed about the scaling effect right while you are uh, already we are using some uh, similar kind of sensors in macro scale what uh, does it uh, uh, like how does it change when we scale down to micro scale or nano scale and there we have seen that the physics remains same but the phenomena might change because like some forces are uh, dominant like the volumetric forces are dominant in 3D scale whereas like uh, the surface forces are dominant in uh, micro scale. What we have seen in scaling that the volumetric forces are dominant in the macro scale like in bigger scale right whereas the surface uh, forces or one dimensional forces are dominant in like uh, micro scale or nano scale and accordingly the phenomena changes. Then we have seen uh, like the simple mechanics and uh, we uh, like how the force and deflection is related and for measuring a force or in any pressure or uh, uh, similar mass of uh, some particular body then we, we actually use some kind of moving structure like cantilever or membrane. And as it applies some kind of force then the structure deflects and accordingly we measure the deflection by electronic way by or optical way and accordingly we calculate the force. Now how this force and deflection are related for cantilever or for membrane that we have already uh, discussed in the um, uh, module 1 and 2. And then we have also uh, seen that for complicated structure like if we have uh, more than one beam like two beams or three beams then we can use the parallel uh, like uh, we can use the spring mass system like par two parallel spring or two springs in series and can calculate the equivalent spring constant and accord can accordingly calculate the force. Right. Then we have also uh, then we have discussed about the coupled electromechanics and there we have seen that how uh, on a body we are applying both the electrical electrostatic force and elastic force are applied together and how, uh, how they act together and uh, how the deflection changes with different kind of voltages and what is pull in voltage and uh, then stiction and how this kind of cantilevers or membranes are made we have uh, learnt about silicon etching then uh, also some material deposition in very short way we have uh, discussed uh, some material deposition also very important lithography like how do you make actually this kind of uh, nano patterns right or uh, whether you want to make a uh, micro scale pattern or nano scale pattern how you can use a, um, like an e beam like a pen or a uv light for that purpose. And finally, we have discussed two specific sensors one is pressure sensor and another is accelerometer and we have uh, also an, uh, like um, seen how we can use this kind of system for measuring pressure and acceleration and also uh, we can uh, we can mount it and in very small uh, area because these are also very small sizes right. So, this kind of pressure sensors or accelerometers are the product of MEMS technology. I hope you have enjoyed this course, thank you.